aspects since we've since we've transitioned all the way into <clears throat> you know Amtrak's and scholarships and all these other things that we do. Big Hat is very much a social aspect of this. We still do a lot of fundraising, or we would like people to do a lot of fundraising, uh, but it is where we have fun. Uh, in fact, that is exactly what my dad used to write on uh, uh, people's bylaws as he gave out big hats. He would actually, I have a pair in my hat. So he would uh, basically just write down what, you know, the purpose of big hat is, is to have fun. Uh, you know, you got to go to your seasonal meetings, your big hat auction, that regional conference. <clears throat> uh, he gives requirements. And then just the, the national big hat structure of Secre secretary, treasurer, vice president, big hat president. But the biggest thing with it is fun. So <clears throat> the reason why I think Springfield is as successful as they are, uh, our big hat chapter alone is bigger than most other people's regular chapter memberships. So, <clears throat> and we do that by having happy hours. When, when we do our fundraising, they're fun things. Like what we've got coming up on the 8th is, uh, it's a putt, putt, pub crawl kind of thing. Uh, they call it a diff, I think the frozen open is what it's called. But this other group runs it and then they just pay us to man the holes and make sure people are marking their scores accurately and all that jazz. And we get a percentage of how much they, you know, whatever they raised. Last year, I think we got four grand out of them. And then we turn around and take that and we go on bus trips down to St. Louis. We go to baseball games, uh, you know, golf, things of that nature. Uh, what kind of stuff does, I know our, we got two people who aren't big hats, but is there, what other kind of stuff does, say, Carmela? What does your chapter do? Well, we did a lot of extra fun things, like you said, maybe some socials where it was just the big hatters, or then sometimes we would invite those that are non big hatters to come, but they had to pay extra, or maybe they got the weenies and we got the steak or something of that nature. But like you said, it's all geared around fun and to make you feel special that you're a part of it. Not so much that you're a lead and you're sn snooty, but that you're fun and that why don't you come join us? so and that is a big thing uh is that i would say chapters need to maintain is the exclusivity of it is because why why go out and try to get a big hat if you're just going to be invited to all the fun stuff anyway um we do allow non-big hat springfield occasionally allows non-big hatters to join but that's like last minute bus is leaving in an hour and we had three people not show up so we make some phone calls, to see if we can fill those slots and just give people a taste of, hey, if, if you get your big hat, you get to do more things like this. Uh, and the big thing is, I mean, the recruitment can be a little difficult. Uh, I kind of joke around, I, I have two pitches I can throw at people. I can either tug at their heartstrings and talk about Amtrak's and uh, what was the little boy's name down in uh, Biloxi, Levi, I think. Levi, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> you get those kids and those kinds of stories that, I mean, this this kid, we put him on an Amtrak and then he just went buck wild with it. He was about as social as anybody else you've ever met in your life. And uh, and his story and his, his fight along with it or with his uh, disabilities were compelling. You can tug at heartstrings that way. Or you can, depending on your club, I know my club, I can tug at liver strings and just say, <laughs> hey, it's, it costs $30 a month to be a part of Springfield. If you show up to two things, you can drink your way through that 30 bucks quickly and make it worthwhile to be there. Uh, but that's, I mean, we just, Springfield has more money than most other other folks do so we get to get away with that kind of stuff uh as far as uh you know fundraising and bringing people in does it 
are you guys having any kind of challenge or are you just new? Like, I kind of want this to be a two-way conversation because I'm very bad at just talking. <laughs> any of the newer folks? Paul, I'm going to call you out. <laughs> one, one. You're muted still. No, not yet. There How about go. there? Hey. Yep. Uh, I've only been in this area for about five years, so I don't know a whole lot of people. So that's one of the things I struggle with. How did you get involved in the club? Uh, one of the realtors was already in the club and I saw a post that she had made. And so I contacted her and says, Hey, I want to join. <laughs> okay. Are you, uh, are you also a realtor? I take it. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, my God, you got a, you got a social enough job. You should be able to get out there. and. Uh... <laughs> I tried. I, I had one from a client and then she's already withdrawn. So. Oh, that happens. Uh, yeah. I know the, actually funny enough, the three people that I brought in, two of them were my brothers. Uh, I just so happened to be the first one of us to join. Uh, and a third guy was someone that heard me talk at a happy hour in Soulard. And he had just retired from the military. He donated enough money for two veteran trikes and then his annual dues for, I think, two years or three years, something like that. And then we never saw the guy again. He just <laughs> moved away to Florida <laughs> after he retired from uh, from being a government contractor. Uh, but so my, my folks aren't even in anymore, really. Uh, so I don't feel bad about that. Uh, Mr. Seltzer, how about yourself? Yes, yes, I'm I'm here and I'm enjoying the call. Um, I don't really know what the question was, but I, I do want to say that one thing I enjoyed hearing is that from you that this the Big Hat Club is for fun. Our, our Big Hat Club in, in Altoona is, you know, somewhat dormant. But what I'm going to do to our Big Hat president is I'm going to go back and say, we've got to start doing things and having fun and really um really be exclusive about the club so that other people strive to get a big hat because right now i don't think we're doing a very good job of selling why you should get a big hat well why you should get a big hat is bringing in three members within a year but i think we should have on at least a quarterly basis it's fun and we we got finally had a meeting last week and we talked about a lot of things that we can do let's see where that goes how long has that individual been the your big hat president for well he was just elected uh at uh at june 1st at, at oh, the okay. beginning so that's that's a big thing actually springfield big hat did go through a dormant couple of years because uh we didn't really have a an election cycle on it it was just kind of whoever wanted to do it stepped up and then the guy who was our president at the time he traveled for work constantly so he was never in town to plan anything i mean we did we did a poker game or a poker night uh one day during march madness and then i think another bus trip down to st louis to go to a baseball game but it was those two events in the span of a year and a half something like that uh and we finally got in Big Hat onto an actual election cycle to where we do have that changeover and the president is actually worried about losing their job if they, they aren't doing enough. Uh, you know, but, Luke, I know that we try to encourage people to go to conferences, right? And once you're mm -hmm. at a conference and if you're not a Big Hatter, you don't get to go, whether it's a breakfast or lunch, we make it a big deal that, oops, you don't get to be part of that and make, again, that be like, that's the fun thing that you want, even if it's early in the morning, and that way, oh, they leave conference and they come back thinking, oh, I don't want to be left out of that. So they'll work a little bit harder on trying to get their big hat then that mm -hmm. that next 12 mm -hmm. months. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the conference, and that's why I've also started trying to do the uh, big hat night in the hospitality suites uh, where it's big hat only for uh, X amount of time. 
again just because we're we're in there gonna have a good time and <laughs> i want to also have an event where i don't have my hand out asking for money for something uh <laughs> not to say that the auction's a bad thing uh by any means just you know i like to get together and just have a drink instead of mm -hmm. trying to do something uh yeah so what uh Alex, what other kind of stuff did you say your your chapter for your big hat was doing? Or... Well, <clears throat> not not a whole lot. And I just wanted to say your two events are more than what we did. So don't <laughs> don't discount that. But I think Helen wanted to uh, make a comment. Oh, go ahead, Helen. Yeah. Hi. I'm um the big hat president from Ponca City, okay. um, Oklahoma. And um we really activated um our chapter because I figured that out at the national conference that hey we're supposed to be uh getting together and do stuff so we have a st starting in September we've had um, a standing fourth Friday and mm -hmm. um, we get together the big hats get together for um happy hour like at a different restaurant and um and bar and hang out and have fun. So we've been doing that the fourth Friday. And then we're, um, uh, we just went to the, um, to Oklahoma city and went to a thunder basketball game, um, Sunday afternoon. And then we went to another event over Christmas. And what we do too, is we always take pictures and then we put them on our charity angel site and we, just remind people, hey, we'd love to have you join our big hat group. You know, remember it's three members, blah, blah, blah. And we have gotten a new big hat. Um, um, yeah, one of my best friends has become a big hat because she couldn't stand it because she wasn't getting to come and hang out with me. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, but, um, and then we have a fundraiser plan because I want we want to raise money so we can bring more money to the auctions at regionals and at nationals and um so we're doing this um deal where and we oh and the other thing we do is we wear our big hats to the box to where we go so people ask us about so that it becomes be like question. a visibility thing too mm -hmm. um and people go oh why are you wearing those hats you know what's going on so um it's enabled us to do that but we have a fundraiser coming up where we're gonna um uh, be at a, at a, mm, um, oh my gosh, I can't, a convenience store, I couldn't think what I was saying, a mm -hmm. convenience store that does gas, and we're going to um, offer to pump gas and wash your windows for donations. Awesome. Uh, and yeah, and wear our, you know, Ambrex shirts and our big hats, and yeah. So quick bit of advice for pumping gas. Uh, yeah. in one of my past lives, I dealt with, uh, jet fuel and gas and all that kind of stuff in the military. Uh, if you get it on your clothes or your shoes, Coca-Cola is what you need to wash it with. Oh, good. Just, good to know. Just okay. So getting some Coca-Cola, <laughs> the, the full strength, not the diet stuff. Okay. Uh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. That'll, that'll get the smell right out of all, uh, out of everything. <laughs> Great. Uh, but no, that's awesome. Are you guys, so when you, uh when you do your fundraising stuff, are you giving that back to your main club? Or are you holding it uh, to your big We're hat get, purse? We talked about it. We want to use it for um, kind of relieve the chapter from having to come up with auction stuff. And we want to, um, we want to, we decided we wanted to use it for the auctions at the regional and nationals. Okay. Uh, no, that makes total sense. Uh that's that's great we uh we actually another fun thing that folks can do is and we just did this one of our members is a uh local uh craft brewery like they're they're tiny but they can still you know make their own beer and make their own labels and all that stuff for their cans so we now have a line of abc beer as well as a line of uh big hat beer cans uh cool. so we'll you'll be seeing some of that in the auctions uh oh cool as we come along i'll be bringing it along with me uh just because i know the the big hat beer shockingly enough is beer that i don't like it's way too crafty for me 
Uh, but things along those lines are absolutely stuff that you guys could be doing that everybody could be doing is, you know, finding these local businesses around to, to partner with as well to, you know, maybe they'll it, uh, give you a, a good drink deal or something. If you say, Oh, we're coming in with 30 some odd folks to a bar. They, yeah. they like to hear that on their, their downtimes. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> Uh, other than that, uh, Sarah, I'm going to pick on you, Sarah Nunemaker. <laughs> Are you a Big Hat member yet? Uh, and you are muted, ma'am. I'm muted. There, there we go. go. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Okay, so no, I'm not a Big Hat yet. How long have you been in? Um, I've been in for a few years, probably about five Okay. Uh, do you guys, do you have an active big hat chapter in your chapter or what's going oh, on there? We do. We do. I was one person away and had like 30 days until my 12, my year. Yeah. So that's actually, uh, now that yeah. you say that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're fine. Kids are common on these meetings. Uh <laughs> So that, that kind of brings me to a point, you know, there's people who, you know, they pride themselves on how many stars they have on their hat and that's all well and good. Like I, I, <laughs> Carmela is definitely one of them. Uh, and I don't take anything away from it, but I'm also proud of, I only have three stars on my hat because of people just like Sarah of if I know someone has done the work to get two folks in and they're getting close to running out of time and they really want to be a part of it, I've been pretty good about finding people a, a third uh, just so that we c I would rather have more big hats than more stars in my hat. I think that's that's just my motto. It Again, I don't mean anything uh, by it to the Carmelas of the world. But, no, uh, I agree. I agree. <laughs> uh, I have that too. But that's just my philosophy on it all is is – you know, the the more people you have, the more fun you can have, the the more you can raise, so on and so forth. And, you know, and really not everybody that, uh, like Paula was dealing with and like I dealt with, not everybody that you bring in is going to stay in, uh, which is unfortunate, but it's just a fact. People move. Things happen. Uh, so I didn't want to put Alex back in the hot seat, but I did want to mention <laughs> You know, the first time that I had a conversation with him, I think it was because he very boldly asked the question, how do we explain Ambux? We need resources that help us paint the picture of who we are and what we do, because it can be diverse. Some of our groups do a whole bunch of things and it can get a little convoluted. Um, are any of you finding who would like to recruit three members in a year and get your big hat? Are you struggling with explaining who we are and what we do or that we're a membership dues organization? Because sometimes that can be off-putting. Or do you all just really have an amazing elevator speech and everyone <laughs> you ask to join <laughs> signs right up? Well, I wouldn't say I have an amazing elevator speech. I think I uh, just annoy people enough until I wear them down and they either stop talking to me or they join. Uh, <laughs> uh, I actually, That's a good point, the... uh, Luke. That's a good point. Just wear them down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, be, as far as, I mean, I would say my, my pitches, again, I, I have the two. You know, you can tug at the heartstrings and say, you know, we're getting these kids on bikes and we're we're helping them ride around the, the neighborhood with their brothers and their sisters and the neighborhood kids and making them feel like a normal kid again or that they, they don't have whatever disability that they do have. Uh, or with the veterans, getting them on bikes and riding bikes with their children for the first time ever, potentially. Uh, and then again, depending on your chapter, I know Ponca City can do it, but you can also tug at the liver strings a little bit or the fun strings of just, look, we're a group of crazy folks that, you know, either have a drinking problem or a charity problem and a drinking habit uh, <laughs> or so on and so forth. Uh, but you can, uh, 
you can use both. It just depends on your chapter and what you guys do. Uh, truly. When I think Springfield has done a really good job of adding that social component so that your members feel like they're kind of getting back what they've invested into the group, if that makes sense. So they're paying their membership dues, but they're also having that social opportunity. So you're kind of telling them, you know, in addition to this amazing mission, we also have this, this, this that comes along with investing in an Ambux membership. So and they feel truly, like they're getting what they pay yeah. for. That and the the networking that comes along with it. Uh, yeah. Springfield, again, is is kind of second to none in that. You can't throw a rock in our club without hitting an accountant uh, but or a banker or something like that. But we do have truly enough members to where if someone has an issue, say, you know, we had tornadoes not too or earlier in the year and some folks had trees down on their houses and they just put it on our Facebook page of, hey, who does tree service? And because they were members, they were taken care of before a whole lot of other folks were. Uh, so not only do you get the social aspect of it, you get, you know, your, your business contacts. You know somebody who knows somebody in just about any field that you could need them. Uh, I mean, hell, that's how I got the loan for my house, was just knowing somebody in the club. Uh, and obviously filling the requirements, but uh, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Uh, hey, Luke. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? This is Tom Smith. I'm from the Grand Rapids chapter. How are you? Not too bad. How about yourself, sir? Good. Thank you. I just wanted to chime in a little bit as um, Alex had asked a question. And I've been in Ambux oh. since 1979. So I've it's been a lot of years. And one thing that's hap helping us now, and I don't know how all the other chapters work it, We've got a pretty good person who gets our weekly speakers, and that can also excite the members to, uh, we do a bulletin, here's who's going to be speaking, bring a guest. And so sometimes, you know, bringing guests can get them to attend to see, you know, this is what we talk about. And at the end of this month, we, we have a once a month evening meeting for those who can't get away during the day, and we're going to have an acapella choir come to entertain us. Um, and so I just would like to throw out, uh, again, I don't know, I know it's not easy to get speakers because of all the years I've been involved, but if you can get somebody who can put in some interesting people and have all kinds of things. We had a uh, pause with a cause, which is uh, they teach dogs to work with people with disabilities. <clears throat> we also, we also, she also raised a dog who uh, helped get drugs, uh, a large drug bust, and she said that the drug cartel put a hit out on her pause with a cause puppy because of the damage <laughs> to the drug. So anyway, we get interesting speakers. So I just wanted to throw that out. That can be a help to invite guests. Absolutely, it can be. Uh, and again, Springfield does do that. Uh, and we even get the, those are interesting speakers. We had, uh, we had a gun dealer come in and explain you know, how, uh, how he runs his shop, how all the, all the licensing and all the stuff that he has to go through works. Uh, yes. And then we also did the, we had both the mayoral candidates of the town during the last election cycle uh, come and talk to us. And it was actually, it was, I was shocked to see that they allowed a Democrat to come talk, but I was happy they did. It was, it was nice to hear uh, some other opinions from, versus what you get in most of Springfield ABC. Uh, hey, Luke. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think you can see that it looks like I have two up there. There's two different Paula Watsons up there. One of them is actually Paula mm -hmm. Bleckley because she couldn't get in. But oh, she's, okay. she said that um, she, she said to suggest that we develop an elevator pitch. Okay. Uh, So what, what uh, I mean, I guess, is Paula not able to talk? Is is she just kind of shy? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> She's not shy. <laughs> I know. Uh, hey, hey, Luke, this is Gordon. Go ahead, Gordon. 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to say, first and foremost, I'm coming to visit Paula and Sarah because we need to get them big hatted. Uh, so, so I'm going to drive over there and see you. Uh, Sarah, a message for you is uh, even if you have a person time out, don't give up. Uh, we actually have a big hat sitting in our house that we're going to present to one of our members. She had to get four to get three. Uh, she, uh, because her, her very first one timed out. So, you know, she needed that third uh, and the fourth one to get credit for three and, and she didn't give up and she got it. Um, our chapter, probably the big hat uh, club is rejuvenating itself. Uh, we do a Thursday night social once a month. Uh, but for about the last five years, we also do a big hat baseball game at the Oklahoma City Dodgers baseball. And it's for big hats only. Uh, so so that works out really well. And uh, I'm surprised that Helen didn't go further into it because the Charity Angels have a really good uh, uh, big hat program. And it's got a great leader there in Helen. Yeah, I was about to say, I know a lot of those Ponca City girls, they, I can't imagine they have a bad time. Uh, shoot, I lost what I was going to say. Oh, Gordon, as you're uh, talking about getting those other two big-headed, Matt Trainer not being a big hat? Uh, Matt, what's going on there, bud? Is he still on? <laughs> I don't see him. Well, he can watch the recording and we'll make fun of him later. Uh. But no, so as far as what uh, Paula was saying, developing a little bit of an elevator pitch, for those who don't know who Paula is, she is a uh, past national big hat president as well. Uh, so that's not, it's not a bad idea. Uh, Robin, I know you had some issues bringing people in. Like, what what were you saying to folks when you were trying to recruit to get your big hat? I know you have it now. Uh, but what were you doing that you were struggling with that we could potentially build on? I think I was trying to give, like, a big picture of Ambox. That's kind of throwing out a big net and seeing what would catch their interest. Um, mm -hmm. I would tend to talk about Amtrak's a little bit more than other things, unless I knew that they were already involved in some community service that I was basically telling them, you know, we could incorporate that into what our chapter was doing. Um, so that helped. And then honestly, we got um, two physical therapists that came to our chapter at the same time, which was wonderful because we I kind of one might say pounced on them. <laughs> <laughs> but to those who are on the call that don't have their big hat yet, or maybe even just need one, I will tell you, putting it out there within our group, there are people like Luke, um, maybe like Wendy Bond, who will come up to you when you are at national and share with you that there's someone that's coming to the national convention who's not an Ambox yet. So um, then when I was able to kind of tease Wendy, find out who it was. It happened to be her husband. Um, so then I told her I wanted to get with her husband. And I was telling <laughs> everybody that I wanted to get with her husband. Um, but so I was trying to have some fun with it. But in the end, um, I just happened to have an application. And I just happened to meet up with him and one or two other people um, at the bar one night. And I had my third person. So um, so to what the two so far that have said that um, they're still struggling a little bit, I would say, um, you know, if any of us could help that person out, um, that would be a great thing to do, right? Because, I mean, we are here to help others, but we are also here to help our own. And what Robin said, too, is remember, we don't have to bring um, a member in just our chapter. So a lot of times you might, like in our city, the Longview Ambucks is just men. So if I run across a, a male that wants to join that chapter versus our co-ed, then you get credit for that. Or again, it could be in a different state. And I think that's where, again, we too, like you said, especially when you're getting down to that 12 months ending, help, uh, help others that can get that big hat. Because once you get the big hat, then it's like, for whatever reason, the next members are easier to get. 
But again, keep in mind, it could be, Paula, you could get somebody in Texas, like, I mean, like in San Antonio, I mean, not San Antonio, let's say Austin or Houston or somebody like that or wherever, and Mike could join. So maybe you have a relative we, that you need to be a member and they're like, oh, okay. And that's the nice thing about Ambux is it doesn't mean that they're going to be oh stuck with all, all these community service projects, et cetera. But if you have a relative in any place that we've got chapters, those are great ones, especially if you just need that one or two more to get that. Once you get your big hat, then, then it's great. But that's what I've done too, is, is grab some relatives or friends or um, people that are in totally different States. Yeah. And we do the same thing uh, in Lawton is maybe easier with three chapters, but Duncan's right up the street also. And, and we kind of use a philosophy that you, you want to recruit somebody, but talk to them and see when they're, they can go to a meeting. If um, the, the key part is bringing somebody in to being a member and it doesn't really matter what chapter it's in. Uh, I, I know I've personally recruited people for, Oklahoma City and other places within the region, uh, but uh, you know, within our chapter, we've recruited from Mountain Metro and the Lawton chapter, and they've done the same thing for us. And uh, the other thing that we, I don't know for sure if we really have an elevator speech. I think we kind of uh, recruit by committee, and that's if somebody's talking to a member and they just are a prospect and they just can't close the deal. Um, we'll, we'll take them over and talk to somebody else that has uh, more experience on closing and uh, you know that person will still get credit for the member but we sh well we do it more by committee than by one individual that having an expectation to recruit so I think it's uh, smart well, mm -hmm. go I ahead, like though. going in I like going in knowing that there's a job because if I'll be honest with you, if I'm doing Ambux somewhere, I'm going to forget to take pictures. And if I'm working with a therapist or a family, I'm not going to always bring up that we're a membership organization. Like I get so caught up in the emotions. And but if you go in knowing that your job is to talk about Ambux and to try to recruit the people that you're working with that day, that's your job. I like it. Sometimes just talking about Ambux and letting it flow out of you because you, each one of you are here. You're very passionate about what you do. I know that has worked for me. I just keep talking about Ambux. And then the next thing you know, you know, I, I say, well, would you like to go do something? Uh, come with me to an activity. Uh, come to a meeting. You've already talked about those. Um, we... Um, we recently started a chapter in Lake Havasu, Arizona, and those two young ladies are so passionate. I got there and it was just like, I could hardly get anything else done. They were just talking to me and saying, asking me all these questions and going out. And they had like eight people in two days. And I'm like, wow, this is great. Because they, they felt the passion. They understood the mission. Um, I think one person's elevator speech wouldn't necessarily work for anyone else. You have to express what's in your heart. And once you express what's in your heart, the people around you will begin to feel it. And oftentimes they become members, at least that's been my experience. Maybe that would help somebody. Honestly, that's a very good point because my, my elevator speech would be for Springfield ABC would be significantly different than really anybody else's uh just because you know there there we do have a lot of requirements for our rookies of i think they have to put in something like 30 hours or so within their first year uh just in all the things that we do there's you can split that up pretty easily but then you also have to do you know a build a giveaway a lunch a meeting uh then several shifts that the Illinois State Fair, and that's not always easy work. Uh, <clears throat> though I'm, I'm. It's not so bad because uh, Donna can do it. <laughs> uh, it's fun. Great fun. Oh, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's hard not yeah. to have fun slinging beer. 
Uh, but it's still, it's, I mean, it's a lot of work. There's a lot of things that go into, you know, a, a chapter, a 300 person chapter. Uh, yeah, we're, I think we're over that number now. I know we were floating around 290 a few months ago. Uh, but I think we did finally get over that 300 number uh, here recently. Uh, hey, Luke, <clears throat> could you could you yeah. say more? So you're you're telling me that you make uh, volunteering a requirement in your chapter? Yes. Uh, well, Springfield does so much. Like we have so many responsibilities that right. you know we have we have to. I mean, you you don't get to just join and then sit back and say you're a member uh it's very few people get away with not working the state fair and it's because nine 99 times out of 100 it's because they're a state trooper or someone who is already working at the fair uh but the big thing that we do we say you have to go to a meeting like <clears throat> you have to be introduced at a meeting you have to go to a lunch uh you have to go to an amtrak giveaway you have to go to uh an amtrak build and that's really just getting them involved in it and saying, hey, <clears throat> this is what you're here for. Like, yes, we have all this fun elsewhere, but you're, there's work to be done, and this is what we're here for. Uh, then we also, I mean, the, the thing that is unique to us is at the Illinois State Fair, Springfield ABC is in charge of selling all of the beer at the grandstands during the concerts, uh, as well as at a uh, satellite arena where they do the demolition derby and the tractor pulls and all that stuff. <clears throat> but then we're also in charge of parking and admissions. So every single person that walks into the state fair walks by us. <clears throat> and the way we do that is, you know, we have the contracts and then we... <clears throat> put something out to town or our local charity organizations around us and say, Hey, come work for a day, you know, whether it's at a gate or at the grandstand and for your labor for us, we will give you a donation. <clears throat> and it, the, the size of the donation depends on the size of the gate, all that jazz, but that's, that's worked for us for very, shoot. We've had, we've had the gates since, early 2000s and we've had the grandstand since the 1950s wow. uh, <clears throat> do, you, do you have that in writing luke i mean where you, you know when you're in uh inducting a new member do you say you know here are your requirements uh so we we ask them if their requirements have been explained to them and if they haven't then they get explained okay. to them and whoever's bringing them in gets admonished for not telling them what they had to do uh <laughs> And then, uh, but no, not, not in anything. Like we don't have anyone sign something saying, I yeah. promise I will do this. Uh, it's more, we just explain it to them. And then lots of emails go out around the fair time of, Hey, get your rookie requirements in. So on and so your, forth. Your what requirements? Rookie requirements. Revenue requirements. Rookie. rookie. Rookie requirements. I like that. Well, you know, we're a group of 50 people and, and we have maybe a dozen people that do all the work and yeah. the balance of the members do absolutely nothing. And I'm tired of that. So hmm. another thing that we do is uh, we actually have a rookie committee uh, and they, they get a project for the year. Uh, okay. So one year, like we have a, a big... I want to say 16 or 18 foot long trailer uh, <laughs> that we have for our Amtrak's and all that jazz that we have. I mean, that thing looks like a NASCAR. It's, it is covered in uh, sponsors. And that year was, that was the rookie's job was to go, go out and get our sponsors. Uh, here's, here's the, how much it'll cost for what. And I think we ended up bringing in about $80,000 for that. Wow, but a reason for that being such a successful fundraiser is because we don't just park our trailer in someone's barn. We move our trailer around to businesses throughout town so that, you know, 
if you pay for a sponsorship, you're going to get seen. And oh. then we also take the trailer into the parades and things that, like that that we do. I mean, <clears throat> it can be beneficial to have that trailer. Uh, oh, thank you. Or a good moneymaker for that. Uh, and I think then, Luke, that gives you lots of visibility about Ambux too, because you're setting it at those different parking lots. So all around town in different places, you're getting different types of people to see Ambux. So not only does that sponsor get visibility, so does it your chapter. Oh yeah. And Ambux is the biggest thing on there. Uh, and it's got, I mean, actually that's the, the backdrop of my, uh, my presidential picture is me standing in front of the trailer. Uh, mm. But no, it's, it's doing that type of stuff is, is great. I think another year we had them do, uh, we had them in charge of a bourbon barrel raffle that we did. So they had to go collect, you know, however many bottles of bourbon, uh, the club paid for a bottle of Pappy and a bottle of Weller, like just to have those big names on it. <clears throat> but then, uh, but then they had to go get everything else. And there was, you know, some, your Jack Daniels, your crowns, things like that as well but it was something along the lines of 75 bottles of bourbon with a few high dollar ones and we raised thirty thousand dollars doing that uh you can wow there's a lot of simple things that you can give a rookie to do that you'd be surprised at what they're good at but if you don't give them the opportunity to do something then they're not going to know and you're I not going to know that list you create automatically creates jobs for your rookies. You mm -hmm. know, think of it as a checkoff list because you, you want them to get involved. But another way to look at it is now they, they know, Oh, I can do this and I can do this. And I mean, you kind of lay on them that it is expected because it is in your chapter. It's very expected. Mm -hmm. But I think, Sometimes we forget to ask the new ones. I think Jessica alluded, alluded to that too. When you bring in a member, I always try to mentor them for a year or longer if they need it, or just go out and have fun with them all the time. But <laughs> you know that mentoring, that bringing them and make sure they're called when you're going to have an activity as a chapter or as a big hat or whatever. Um, make sure that they know what's going on and they understand it because there are so many things about Ambux that a person can't pick it all up real quickly. And it takes a few years actually sometimes. So it just makes them feel comfortable involved. You automatically, your chapter has that set up with the, the rookie situation. Rookies do this and they know their jobs. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, the big thing about it is, and again, the what a lot of people or a lot of these smaller tech chapters tend to forget or even not know when they start their chapter is that Ambux started off as a social club. Like be, be social, do something social, because if you're just doing business meeting after business meeting after business meeting where Joe and Alex have a very good plan in their head to do something, then, you know, they're going to, they might be scared to speak up and say, Hey, what if we add this little twist to it or do something else kind of something along those lines where they're just scared to talk. And then they eventually get discouraged and they don't want to be a part of it anymore because they're just not doing anything because Joe and Alex are doing it all. Uh, so having those socials, that social setting to where you can just talk and get to know somebody, then that kind of gives them the, the courage to you know, jump or throw their hat in the ring or throw their voice in the ring and see what happens. Uh, so Luke, so, since you so, talked about throwing your hat in the ring, since we do have mm -hmm. some new faces in here, um, do you want to talk about like how to get to our offices that we're in? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so when you, when you do eventually get your big hat, uh, I'm sure you will be very, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, motivated to then become your big chapter, big hat president. Well, to get up to national president, you have to be uh, your chapter president first. Then you have to be the regional director. 
and then from your regional director, you can jump into uh, Miss Terry Lehman's seat as secretary treasurer uh, nationally. And then from there, you go vice president and then president. And then you get a fancy black hat like uh, Miss Davis and uh, <clears throat> Miss Carlton Bish over here, <laughs> as well as uh, who's that? Who's that guy from Michigan? Oh, kind of Al. older gentleman. <laughs> Al. Uh, <laughs> yes, Al. <laughs> uh, our other black hatter on here, and they're a great resource to have as well that you can lean on and ask questions to if, if you were to need. Uh, when you eventually get up to these positions and you don't always have to you know reinvent the wheel but <clears throat> you know as long as everybody's having fun it's never a bad thing to uh oh i am bad with words right now to aspire to that's what i was looking for uh yeah. but miss fina uh vice president do you uh have anything to add well um what you meant to say is you have to be big hat region director, not regional director. Oh. So, I mean, just keep that in mind. <laughs> um, and the other thing is um, don't be scared just because you have only three stars on your hat. If you want to run for a national office, go for it. Um, I know Luke and I are both, we both only have three members. Um I mean, I I live 35 minutes away from my meeting to um, even invite anybody because um, I'm not sure if, you know, everybody's like me and, and willing to drive that far to go to a lunch meeting or if they can get away. And I live in a small town. I don't live in the city. So I, I struggle with being able to invite people because I don't know anybody in the city. So don't be afraid of that uh, just because you only have three hats on your uh, hat. I mean, that's so really all I, I have to say. I mean, you know, and the other thing is when I put my my hat, my, my name in the ring for it, um, I wasn't sure where the money came to uh, do the fundraiser. I mean, I, I honestly, when I, before I even put my name, I was afraid it was coming out of my pocket, um, oh. which it does not, uh, which I found out. So I was like, okay, then I can do this. I think I can, I can step up to the plate and, and uh, add some more fun to our big hat organization. And I certainly think that you have Miss Fina. Terry, okay. do you want to okay. add anything? Um, well, thank you. Yes. Um, I'm the current National Big Hat Secretary of Treasurer. And one of the things is after I did my chapter president and um, uh, the Big Hat Region Director, um, that next step wasn't right away. I had to wait a little bit until I was ready um, to commit to serving as a national officer. So I don't think you have to just boom, boom, boom for that, but wait till you're ready. And then on, um, I've also been reaching out to Adam in the national office and he's been creating some flyers um, for me to use because I've had some interesting questions from, um, we go to the chamber events and recruit uh, a lot of people while we're networking there. Um, and he was like, he presented a challenge that I hadn't seen, in, but it was, somebody much younger than me. And I was like, okay, I'm not exactly sure how to approach or how to recruit. Um, but he was very interested in what Adam gave me to use. And I still, you know, followed up with him once and I need to follow up with him again. Um, I don't know, um, but we have resources at the national office that will help you as well. And uh, we can share those those flyers out. Um, um, to those that are here or however we want to do that. But sometimes that helps me um, when I'm talking to somebody to be able to email them something with additional information. So we can look to, to create some, some big hat marketing resources um, specific for, for the big hat recruitment. I think that would be helpful. Absolutely. Uh, 
no. and we would we appreciate you greatly uh of for for doing everything that you've done for us of course uh and folks unless uh unless somebody else has anything to throw in uh gordon does it looks like yes uh one, one of the i always have something to say you should got you should better get used to it yeah but you um, already said like 10 things yeah, <laughs> hey, hey, well, i'm messing with you buddy. one of the one of the topics at the Great Plains Region Com- Conference is going to be the high. Uh, it, the class is called Highway to National President and uh, uh, Black Hat, um, and we already have the, one of the instructors uh, assigned to that. She's sitting in this room, and I believe she has a black hat on her head, and she's uh, said that she would teach that class. But we're we are doing that class at Region Conference. And just oh, one other little quick thing as we're getting off, Luke, do you want to mention your fundraiser? And sure. tickets? You're, you're, you're uh, getting it out to your clubs? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so actually, that solid idea. Uh, anybody who wants tickets, uh, I do have physical tickets. Uh, Fina, I will be giving you uh, a good portion of them when, we, when I see you at the end of the month. Uh, but anybody else that is not around Fina, if you would like me to send you uh, national raffle tickets, shoot me an email. The raffle is going to be a cash prize, uh, $10,000 total. It's $5,000 to the uh, first place prize winner, uh, three to the second and two to the third. I think that math math's right. Uh, and the tickets are what? $20 for one and $100 for six. Uh, we do also have online tickets that I believe you can find on the website. Uh, and we will hopefully be getting these out to everybody that's active. My thought is kind of to do it at the regional conferences so that people get the, that they get to people who are active and I'm not just sending it to a dead address. Uh, and that's, that's what I've got for my raffle. Uh, I'm sure Fina's got something pretty cool up her sleeve for next year. Um, I do. Also, if if <clears throat> anybody is willing, uh, what my original raffle was going to be was going to be a, a hunting safari to Africa. Uh, the trip cost like twenty some odd thousand dollars that I just got too late before I announced what this cash raffle is going to be. So I am selling that trip for five thousand dollars to help pay for the uh, the cash prize. If anybody wants to to purchase that feel free to let me know and i will be happy to share more details before we say goodbye i just have one question can i get that information later on the the trip to africa yep absolutely thank you Go ahead, I, Alex. yeah can i ask a question and it, we started the meeting with this like what is the policy of ambux when it comes to giving members uh, new members. Like I've done that, I can't tell you how many times and I've regretted it every time because in most cases they were the first member that they got. And I, I, I'm hoping you guys say, no, you shouldn't do that. So it's that's truly up to you. Uh, however you wanna do it. My personal uh, policy with it is they gotta have their two already and then i'll help them with their third if they've shown that they're willing to work and all that then hey i understand how hard that third person can be but i'm not going to hand anybody a whole big hat that's that's not how it works we don't either in our chapter uh, we do the same we have help them with that third one like you said all the time because that makes it exciting but definitely have them try to get number one and two and if they need help I'll, i don't mind talking to them and trying to encourage them and all but um definitely that third one's all about trying to get them so they can get that big hat because that makes it more exciting especially yeah. as the year comes mm -hmm. yeah oh absolutely yeah. yep <clears throat> all right thank you absolutely uh so if that's uh unless anybody has anything else uh thank you all for for joining us uh and i look forward to seeing you guys at spring conferences and national and hopefully wearing a big old big hat.